in the NBA playoffs, we've practically seen everything. We've seen a point guard play center, we've seen a player score 8 points in 9 seconds, and we've seen teams come back from 27 point deficits on the road to win a game. Matter of fact, if you're a neutral fan, comebacks just might be the most fun part of the playoffs, and it feels like they happen more often than ever. The Nuggets came back from two 3-1 deficits in the bubble in back-to-back -back series, the Cavs made the only 3-1 comeback in NBA Finals history, and the Celtics recently came back from a 3-2 deficit against the Sixers. However, the Celtics face a completely new challenge against the Miami Heat, dropping their first two games of the series at home and being down 3-0 in this series. Just for reference, coming back from a 3-0 deficit has literally proved impossible in the NBA, as teams are 0-150 and in that position. In this video, we'll look into why no team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit, but also why the Celtics might be the first team to ever do it. But before we get into that, be sure to leave a like on the video as each like makes a tremendous difference for the channel and also be sure to sub to the channel for even more content like this. Being down 3-0 is uncharted territory and you can pencil in the other team's spots in the next round because of it. In the Western Conference Finals, the Lakers were recently down 3-0 to the Nuggets and were subsequently swept in a nail-biting Game 4. If the Lakers somehow managed to win two straight games in that series, they'd be only the 15th team in NBA history to force at least a Game 6 when trailing 3-0. Doc Rivers, funny enough, has had multiple 3-0 leads and has been forced to Game 6 twice, but even his teams didn't allow a Game 7. Actually, only three teams in NBA history have ever forced a Game 7 after being down 3-0, with the last time that happened being 20 years ago. So what gives? Why is coming back from a 3-0 deficit considered unfeasible when it's just one game off of a 3-1 comeback? If a team can come back from a 3-1 lead, then why can't the recipe for success be replicated to win 4 straight games? Well, the truth is, coming back from a 3-1 lead is unfeasible as well. Teams throughout NBA history are 258 and 13 when they have a 3-1 lead, which is a win percentage of 95%. And the last 3-1 comeback we've seen was the Nuggets over the Clippers in 2020. To mount a 3-1 comeback, you obviously need almost everything to go your way and, more specifically, a combination of things to happen. For one, you practically need otherworldly performances from either your star players or a collection of role players for three straight games just for your team to even have a shot. In the Nuggets case, Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic put up a performance for the ages in games 5 through 7 of the Clippers series, with Murray averaging 29-6-6 six six on 52-55-90 splits and Jokic averaging 24 points, 17 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 blocks. And in the 2016 Finals, Kyrie and LeBron put up some of the craziest stat lines in playoff history in the last three games of that series just to come back, with Kyrie averaging 30 points on 50-50-100 splits and LeBron averaging 36 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, 3 steals, and 3 blocks. 2015 was a completely weird case because it wasn't the stars that spearheaded the comeback. Rather, it was the role players. In Game 6 in Los Angeles, the Rockets were essentially defeated, being down double digits in the fourth quarter and with James Harden being benched. However, Josh Smith and Corey Brewer overcame that double digit deficit to force a Game 7. 
Moving on, in order to stage a 3-1 comeback, you need great performers on the other team to be uncharacteristically off. It most definitely helps if the player underperforming is the other team's most impactful player, but you also have to account for literally any combination of players going ultra instinct. One thing people don't mention about the 2016 finals is that Clay was actually pretty effective in the last three games of that series, averaging 25 points per game. But Steph's underperformance and Harrison Barnes' inability to make a shot sunk to 73 and 9 Warriors. Steph Curry, obviously the most impactful player, averaged 30 points on 50 40 90 splits in the 2016 regular season, which rightfully earned him the unanimous MVP. But in games 5 through 7 of the finals, he averaged just 24 points on 37% from the field, averaged just 2 assists, and averaged 4 turnovers. Harrison Barnes, who was a starting small forward for the team, was way worse, averaging just 5 points and shooting 16% from the field in those games. However, even with Steph playing poorly, the Cavs barely survived a Draymond Masterclass in Game 7 to win their first title in franchise history. Finally, but just as importantly as the other two, a coach quite literally has to put up the best performance in their professional careers. In order for a comeback to happen, whether it be a single game or a multitude of games, you need to make major adjustments to counteract everything the opposition did well and replicate everything that you did well. This is extremely difficult given that the only team your opposition is game planning against is your team and they'll obviously do everything in their power to take anything that worked for you. Additionally, these adjustments also had to occur during games without any room for error, and you have to be near perfect in late game situations and execution. So, considering all of that, you can see why it's extremely difficult for any team to come back in any series, even in a 3-1 deficit. And in the case of 3-0, quite literally everything has to fall your way for four straight games against a team that was on the verge of sweeping you. However, if there's any situation in which this could happen, it would be in this series of Celtics Heat, a series where an overachieving 8th seed took a 3-0 lead over the best team in the East. The Celtics don't have the better coach in this series, as Spolstra is the best in the league, but they were thin all but one game in this series, they have home court advantage, and they have the better roster by far. Meaning, if there is a Game 7, it will be in Boston, and the Celtics easily have the talent to mount a comeback against the Heat team that's now without Gabe Vincent, a player that averaged 18 points on 58% from the field and 50% from three in this series. The Celtics are a great three-point shooting team and are also the deepest team in the league, with multiple role players that can step up at any given time. Plus, they have two All-NBA performers, with Jason Tatum also being a superstar and a top 10 player in the league. As come and go as he can be at times in the playoffs, he is more than capable of having all-time great performances when needed. Just like he did just over a week ago when he dropped the most points ever in a Game 7 at 51. When the Celtics were down 3-2 against the Bucks last season, Tatum dropped 46 points on the road to face off elimination, and literally two games ago, dropped 33-11-7 on the road in Miami to force a Game 5 in Boston. In elimination games overall, Jason Tatum actually averages 27-8-6 across 15 games. Additionally, one of the conditions for a comeback was for the other team's most impactful players to struggle, as we just saw with Jimmy Butler in Game 5. To the Heat's credit, Spolstra again is the best coach in the league, the role players have been consistent throughout the bulk of the playoffs, and Jimmy Butler has been all-time great, meaning that it's still likely that the Heat win one of a potential two games left in this series. This is a battle between the best team in the East in the regular season 
and the best team in the East in the playoffs. But the Celtics have momentum and have the chance to remind everyone that they're out for vengeance. In the comment section down below, tell me whether you think the Celtics have a legitimate chance to win this series and what needs to happen for that to come to fruition. Additionally, let me know whether your favorite team has come back from a 3-1 deficit and what series that was. Be sure to leave a like on the video as each like makes a tremendous difference for the channel and also be sure to sub to the channel for even more content like this. Hope to see you all in the next one and stay tuned.